Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and as promised I'm going to try to make a video for you every day for the rest of March because I know people are sheltering in place and inside and you might want something to watch or to get you inspired to go shelter in place in your studio <laughs> which is what I'm doing. Um, I am using the Art Joy of Sharing Facebook groups um, March mood board to inspire this project and you saw it at the beginning it was designed this month by Peg Robinson we trade off mine will be next month you know back and forth there's also a file in our group art joy of sharing and I will put a link to the Facebook group in the description box below the video where you click that thing that says show more you can go and ask to join you do need to answer the questions that are, are pop up when you ask to join because we endeavor to keep robots and people who are just selling stuff out of the group. So if you're interested in sharing your art, seeing what other people are sharing and joining into our challenges and things like our mood boards and, and we do pick a stick challenge and we have, you know, an ATC every day and an art journal page every day, just all those type of things that we offer in the group. If you'd like to join in with that stuff, you can go ask to join the group. So I decided to start my project by picking some of the colors from the mood board. It's, it's obviously very spring. It has a baby chick. It's got some tulips, some yellow tulips, some bright, you know, uh, flowers on a tree, that type of stuff, things growing in the ground. It's definitely a spring inspired um, mood board. A mood board is just a collection of photos that someone has has collated for you to get inspiration. You can be very literal with the inspiration or you can be very loose with it. And if you watch some of my other videos from uh, the past where we did, where I did inspiration from mood boards, you'll see that sometimes it's just a, a shape. You can use a shape from the mood board and sometimes it's going to be very literal like I'm taking it right now with the colors. I often am inspired by mood boards by the colors because color is what uh, attracts and fascinates me about art. It's, I'm just, I'm in love with color. So to start out, I decided to make a master board. A master board, again, a very simple concept. It's just a large piece of paper. And in this case, it's 140 pound watercolor paper that um, you use whatever technique you like. It could be paint, it could be stamping, it could be, um, in this case, collage, it can be whatever you want. You can make layers. I'm going to make some layers on this. Um, I like to start with collage a lot. Sometimes I start with just paint, like scraped on paint for the colors. And I continue to build it up until it's something that I think is nice. And then I cut it up. That's what you do with master boards. You cut them up and make them into to, you know, a large amount of things. So I could cut this into card backs mount them on cards and then you know put something a saying or something and they could be made into cards in this case i'm going to make them into artist trading cards you could make them into tags you could make them into the round artist trading traders trading coins um, whatever smaller thing you can cut them up you could you could make a large master board and then make four canvases out of it so that you could have you know a matching set of similar color and shape and it's interesting when you cut them into smaller pieces what kind of patterns you get because you're being very random when you're doing this. I'm just randomly gluing on some different papers. Um, there is tissue paper with printing on it. There is deli paper with some stamping on it. There's uh, gel printed paper. There's a tea stained napkin that's, you know, just got interesting drippy color on it. And then there's some very old paper and I don't know if this was like a newsletter or what it was I'm not sure where it came from but it's obviously very aged and it has it says at the top round bunny round up and it looks like somebody had a contest for drawing bunnies and it has the bunny that won the contest and then some other bunnies and some type and I decided that since this was a spring master board that I should use that page so I just used some text during the collage process and now you'll see one of the bunnies that um, will come up later. I just thought it was cute and appropriate. So once I'm done with all my collage, then I go in and add another layer with some stencils. Uh, these are Stencil Girl stencils. This one is a ATC stencil that has nine different patterns. I cut them apart and I punched them and put them on a ring, um, easier to use for me. And then I also use another one 
um, before this that is from the March Stencil Girl Stencil Club. Uh, when you're in club, you get three stencils each month. They just come mailed to you automatically as long as you're still in the club. It's $25 a month. You get a 9 by 12, a 6 by 6, and a 4 by 4. And they're exclusive to club. You can't get them unless you're in the club. If you've joined the club, you can get past stencils. You can order the ones that, that have previously come. But uh, that 4x4 four four with the interesting pattern on it that I was using with the Naples yellow paint, that one is from the March Stencil Club that I just got. That's how come I wanted to use it. And then this other one is an ATC one with interesting patterns that kind of look like embroidery or stitching type stuff. So I'm using Naples yellow, I'm using a coral peach pinky color, um, and then a very yellowy bright green acrylic paint to do my stenciling. I also do a little bit of finger painting. If there's a very harsh edge, a very straight edge somewhere that I think um, it's just, it needs to be blended in, I will use my finger and some paint to just kind of rub some paint over it and make it look like it's more of the background. You, when you're making a masterboard, you're trying to unify everything and make it into one piece. So you don't want any really harsh things. Then I got out some olive colored archival ink, which is a dark green. Did a little bit of stamping with this numbers stamp. It's a pretty cool random stamp that uh, is good for doing this type of a thing. I'll try to find it for you. Uh, I'm not even sure who makes it, but I'll look for it and try to put it in a link below the video. Of course, I always try to add links to the colors and products that I use below the video so that you can find them. And uh, oftentimes they're affiliate links, which give me a few cents to buy more art supplies. So this stamp, I do know who it's made by. It's called French Script, and it's a Stampin' Up stamp. I took it off the block so that it would be easier to use in art journals and things. And I know that it's discontinued, but maybe somebody might be selling it on eBay or something. I could maybe find it for you. But there's other French Script or scripty looking stamps out there in the world. They're not uncommon. So then I also added some white splatter using some white India ink. And then I cut up the master board. I cut pieces that were two and a quarter by three and a quarter so that I could mount them on backgrounds. And then I cut a few that were actual ATC size, which is two and a half by three and a half. So those won't go on backgrounds unless I trim them down. So then I was looking at the master board not the master board, the mood board. We've got mood boards and master boards. Blah, <laughs> drive me crazy. Um, there was a uh, a little baby chick on there, and I thought would that would be something that would be cute on an ATC. ATC means artist trading card. They are the size of a baseball trading card or a Pokemon card. Uh, you can put them in sleeves. You can trade them with your friends. So I just drew a little uh, baby chick little fluffy baby chick on some mixed media paper that I had torn out of a pad. I believe this is Canson brand mixed media paper. It could be Dick Blick. Anyway, it's it's just a, it's a thicker paper, um, absorbent. And then once I was happy with my drawing, I went over it with some black Posca pen to darken up the lines, and then I erased the pencil lines. Then I got out a couple watercolor sets. Um, these are tube watercolors that have been allowed to dry into pans. They're the expensive ones that are in different brands. And I have, of course, a swatch there to show me what colors they are. And then I'm using my Princeton number no. eight uh, round watercolor brush to watercolor this baby chick onto this, this mixed media paper. It works pretty well on mixed media paper. Um, doesn't doesn't uh, feather out as much as it does on a watercolor paper because, of course, they're designed. That paper's designed to use watercolors, but this worked fine. I have my little illustration lines to stay within. I'm adding a couple different colors of yellow, some uh, kind of a, a sienna color and some orange colors to color up my baby chick. And then I cut it out and I'm going to glue it down using a permanent glue stick onto this first ATC. I, I'm i only showing four ATCs in this uh, 
this video because it would get too long if I kept going. If you want to see the rest of the ATCs, each one will be unique, but they're all on the same background. If you guys want to see them and want to watch me make them, I will video it and you leave a comment below saying you want to watch it. And if you do, I will, um, you know, if enough people say they want to watch it, I will make it into a video. If not, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you're watching the same colors and the same idea and the same, you know, it's the same, same. But I know people need things to do. So if you guys want to watch it, just leave me a comment below the video to saying that you want to watch it. These, uh, I don't know if I said this at the beginning, these ATCs are going in the packages uh, that I'm sending out for the giveaway. So I just needed more ATCs. That's the reason I decided to do ATCs. So I'm adding some uh, pit artist pen gray around the outside of the image after I glued it down and, and feathering it out with my finger. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm not contagious. <laughs> That was just an allergy cough. Those of us who have allergies don't appreciate being glared at when we sneeze or cough. <laughs> anyway, then I, um, I added a little bit of white Posca pen, uh, little scribbles, you know, to make the, ch the chick look more fluffy. And I printed with my uh, brother P-Touch printer a uh, sticker that says chicks rule. Because <clears throat> you know chicks rule. And then just added a little bit of lines around that. I went around the outside edge to make it dark with a black ink pad. So that was the first one, the first ATC. Also on the mood board, there is a picture of what I assume is probably cherry blossoms on a tree. Um, my printout wasn't very dark, so I'm not sure. But I think it's probably, well, aren't cherry blossoms pink, though? It's some type of blossoms on a tree. And so I decided to just draw something like that onto my ATC. I'm drawing it directly with a fine tip Posca pen and making some flowers, making some leaves, making some branches. Uh, I love to draw trees. I love trees. I, I probably hug them occasionally. I may, may be a tree hugger. We, we won't go into that. <laughs> I just really like them. I think they're awesome. It makes it's it pains me that my main uh, job as an artist is to use paper, <laughs> but it's already the tree. Those trees have already been cut down. I can't do anything for them, you know. So I'm just filling in, making uh, this more interesting with my black Posca pen. That's an acrylic paint pen, and this is a fine tip, but not an extra fine tip. The extra fine has like a little. Um, metal thing on the barrel of it and I don't I don't like those I like the fine tip and the medium tip I don't have any of the really fat ones <clears throat> there are some but I've never ordered them so then I get out my white Posca pen and in in the picture the blooms were white so I color them in white and that's a very opaque product so I can go over the lines um, I wasn't worried about drawing my flowers over the lines of the branches because I knew I was going to color them in with the white Posca pen. Then I get get the uh, pit pins back out in a water brush and start adding some brown to the branches and then some different colors of green to the leaves and a little bit of yellow in the centers of the flowers uh, just to finish out. I like to blend out my um, pit pins with water sometimes instead of just my finger. Kind of makes it look like a water color, but it's permanent because Fabric Estelle pit artist pins are India India ink inside them, so it's permanent. It's a permanent ink, but not a stinky kind. Some permanent inks have a solvent base, and I I can't tolerate those because they 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 smell and they make my head hurt. So. Once I'm done with that, I attach it to one of my cardstock pieces that have been cut. I like to mount my ATCs and tags and things on cardstock. I like the look of that frame of color around the edges. And oftentimes I've made a mess on the back of the card. And so it always covers it up and makes it look, just look nicer. Um, 
This is a thing that I print out on my computer that has all my information on the back of the card. I just glue those on the backs so that you know who made it, where I am, what all my things are, all my social media things and whatever, all that stuff. So I print that, it comes out nine to a sheet, cut them up and put them on the backs of my ATCs. I used a Tim Holtz Big Chat sticker that says today to finish up that card and I'm on to my third card. Looks like I'm trying to find something. Oh yes, here's here's this round rabbit roundup page that I was telling you about. And I think this might have been the winning drawing. I'm not sure. It's a very round, fat little rabbit uh, looking back over his shoulder. And it says the artist's, I think it says the artist's idea of a scared rabbit. I think it says, I can't read it from here, but um, yeah. I think that's what it said. So I, I stuck that down and then added a couple fibers. Um, the dark green one is that type of ribbon that's you can untwist it and make it fatter. I, oh, dang, can't remember what that stuff's called. It was it was a real trend for a while <laughs> and then it went away. I don't know. Um, twisted, twisted raffia or something. I don't know. Remember when raffia was a thing? Everybody wanted to use raffia for everything and now nobody uses it. So I glued those down uh, to the back and then I'm attaching this to a cardstock backing, but I decide that it's gonna be bumpy because the twine and the raffia sticks up. And so I decided to add a few uh, dimensional uh, squares on the back of it to make it stand up from the card. So the background is, is not attached all the way down if you know what I mean, makes it more um, dimensional. And then I'm adding some color and shading to this little drawing uh, using the white Posca ink and then my Fabricastel pit pens to just make the drawing a little bit more dynamic. It's just a simple drawing. And I think I end up tying some twine in a knot and gluing it on and doing some splatters and that's about it for this one. I hope that you're enjoying this video and if you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Of course, make that comment below if you'd like to watch me making the rest of the uh, this background that I cut up into ATCs. I think there's six more or something. And um, also, if you think this is something somebody else would like to see, you can share it on Pinterest or pin it to your ATC idea board if you have one of those. And if you don't, hey, just make one. <laughs> I love Pinterest. Pinterest is awesome. But I frequently forget to pin my own videos. So uh, yeah, I should probably do better at that. So uh, let's see. That one's pretty much done. And we're moving on to the next one. The next one's really simple. Uh, in On the mood board picture, there's a picture of some yellow tulips. Tulips always come up in the spring. They're so pretty. Um, so I just drew a sketchy version of the picture well it just has one tulip the picture has three tulip heads and there's a few little leaves or something um but i just quickly drew a tulip on there i got my watercolors back out and just watercolored right over the top of that using uh, my indian yellow and my cadmium yellow and then a couple of the greens i think one of them is the one that has the, the actual gemstones in it that it sparkles a little bit uh, serpentine maybe it might be serpentine I'm not sure and then there's a little bit of yellow gouache in here I mean white gouache to just lighten up a little bit gouache is a is a type of watercolor that's uh, more opaque and since you know white <laughs> if you're gonna use white watercolor it better be opaque right because otherwise what's the point so that's just to lighten up things. And I also, you know, daub off a little bit and try to keep it looking watercolory because that's a word. Once I dried it, then I came back in and added in illustration lines with my white Posca pen, not my black. Um, just, you know, scratchy, sketchy looking illustration lines. And then what else did I do? I think I, I put some ink around the edges and I added a word. And this one was done, pretty simple one, but definitely my own artwork, so that's good. 
that's the olive archival pad again the same one that I stamped the numbers stamp with so that's pretty much it for me for today and hopefully I'll have another video for you tomorrow I hope you use you watched the hop yesterday if you didn't go back and watch it bye bye <laughs>